This is the next video in the uh, topic of special relativity. Um, it's from the textbook, the New Century textbook. This is 9.4, chapter 9.4. I've called it B because it's the second part of 9.4. I've given it a separate video, about page 265. Um, the topics we're going to cover in here are something a little bit about uh, synchronized clocks and how you can tell which clock is moving. Uh, because after all, you'll have an object, some event that has to be timed and that event could be moving, could be seen by an observer to be moving and we'll go into that. Now look, let's imagine we had, um, this is on your front bench of your room and we had say a car of some sort, a truck and we wanted to time it to go from point A to point B on the front bench. Okay, the question is how would you time that? Now let's say that's 50 centimetres and you're after the, say, the velocity. So what you'd do is you'd get a stopwatch, no doubt, and you'd start the stopwatch when you saw it there, and then you'd stop the stopwatch when you saw it there. Okay, so the question is, is that the only way to time that event? Now the problem with that is, let's imagine this event, rather than being 50 centimetres apart on the front bench of the room, Let's imagine this is planet A, this is planet B, and instead of being 50 centimetres, that's thousands or millions of kilometres away. Okay, this could be Earth and, <coughs> and that could be Mars. And you're trying to time how long it took a rocket ship or some sort of um, satellite to get from one planet to the other. Now, you couldn't just use one stopwatch, because if your stopwatch was here, that's too far. You can't see how far it was to each of those. The only solution to this really is to use synchronized clocks. Now this is pretty straightforward. What you'd, all you'd have to do is this. You'd go to the middle of the two positions and you'd get two stopwatches, or two clocks rather, and set them at say <coughs> 12 o'clock or whatever time you like and then take them to each of the two planets you'd have what we call synchronized clocks so the clocks record the same time now you couldn't do that by having a clock on earth and sending the clock up there they wouldn't be synchronized they both wouldn't read the same time because um, you don't know what speed it's going at and whether there's any relativistic effects or whatever so you'd take them and you'd do identical things to them now another way you could do it, I suppose, is um, have two clocks on the different planets, send a signal from here when it's 12 o'clock, and when it's received up here, um, they'll know that's the signal, the 12 o'clock signal from Earth. <coughs> if you knew the distance and you knew a light signal, how fast it travels, it travels at sea, and you knew the distance, you could work out the time delay. So for instance, if this was Mars, uh, it takes about three minutes for light to travel. So if this was the 12 o'clock signal, you'd have this, this would be received at 12.03. Okay, so you, as soon as you got the signal, you'd start your clock, but you'd have to add three minutes on because that's how long it takes. I think it's about 183 seconds, which is just over three minutes. Okay, so <coughs> that's the first point about synchronized clocks. The simplest way is to get them in the middle and take them to um, each planet or wherever you're taking them or start with them both here, send one up there and then send a synchronizing signal to both. Okay, <coughs> that's the first point. Now um, the next point is about how you'd measure this in a classroom. Um, I'll just check this. Uh, so say for instance you were doing the same experiment so there's A and there's B and you had the truck going from one to the other now in a classroom what you'd have to do now originally I said you'd, you what you'd say is you just have a, a stopwatch and you'd time it from both because that's nice and close but you have to think in terms of space travel because this chapter <coughs> looks at you know 
going to traveling to distant stars and so on. What you'd need is a synchronized clock there and there. And when the truck, the truck would start off here. And when the truck got to there, you'd note the time. You'd have an observer here. So an observer at B, you'd have an observer at A. So you've got to have two clocks. They're synchronized, but two clocks. So you'd record the time that the car left A. It might be 12.00, might be midday, exactly at noon. Then you'd record the time. This observer here would record the time that the truck passed point B, 50 centimeters away or, you know, two light years away or whatever it is. Um, and that would be the time for the journey. Now what you'll notice is you need two clocks because the, there's a, the event occurs here. The start of the event is at A. The finish of the event is at B. So an observer who needs two clocks is measuring one type of time. But you could also have an observer on the truck itself like this. Now when that happens, the observer would start the watch here. The observer um, at rest to the truck would start the, uh, the watch there. And when they got there, they could still have the same watch. And then they'd stop the, or take a reading of the clock there. And they'd take the two values away and you'd get the reading as measured by someone on the truck. Now the question is, we're getting two different values here. We're getting T and T0. Now, the question is, which one is T and which one is T0? The simplest way is to think, we've got an event here, which is the start of the journey and the, and the finish of the journey. The, the event is start and stop. Now, to the person aboard the truck, that start and stop occurs in the one place. Now, that mightn't make sense at first, but let's think about it. Let's imagine, look, this is the roadway. I'll just put an A and B on this because I want to show you how things can change. So A and B. So <clears throat> what's happening is this. The, the truck, in your perspective, goes from there to there. But in the truck's perspective, all that's happening is this you're going backwards. So the truck only needs one watch or one clock to measure the start of the journey, which is there, and the same clock, whoops, the same clock can measure the end. So start it there, finish it there. The, the truck only needs one clock for the measurement of the time for that journey. Now, the start and stop appeared to occur in the same place. The truck didn't move. So we can say the truck is measuring T0 because it needs one clock to measure the event and the event appears to have occurred in the same place. Okay, the truck is there, earth moves past and it's earth that's moving, not the truck. But according to the people on the ground, that is you, you're measuring the truck there and the truck there you're measuring the truck in two different places. So you're measuring T because to you, the truck appears to have moved and you need two clocks, synchronized clocks, but to the truck driver, they only need one clock because the event occurs in the same spot. To them, they're not moving. To you, they're moving. Okay, so this is where you get trapped in these questions, trying to work out which is T and T zero and Probably the hardest part of any of the questions you get on the external exam will be working out which one's T and which one's T0. And they'll try and trap you with some tricky sort of wording. But if you do enough of these questions, the CYL questions in here, uh, you'll see how it works. Now let me give you an example. Um, I'll use, I'll use um, this. And I'll say, let's imagine Let's imagine you've got a truck that does what I've said and it took, according to the truck, um, let's say five seconds elapsed on uh, by the truck's clock. 
whoops, and say 10 seconds elapsed by your clock. Now the question is what speed was the truck going relative to you? Okay, now this is a bit tricky. <coughs> the you're, you're imagining you're at rest and you're seeing the truck go by, but this, this is five seconds, say, elapsing for a journey, say, past your house. Now, this is a very, we're talking about relativistic speeds here. Now, I know the length of your house or a train platform or something like that, which is what we use in these, a lot of these questions, is not very long. And it wouldn't take, if you're traveling at relativistic speed, it wouldn't be five seconds. You wouldn't get that sort of effect traveling at ordinary speeds. So we're talking about very fast, this is a, an imaginary truck, a very fast truck traveling at some relativistic speed, maybe 0.8 times the speed of light. Okay, and this of course wouldn't be five seconds because your house wouldn't take five seconds to pass if the truck's going at 0.8 times the speed of light. So this would, might be five nanoseconds, and this might be 10 nanoseconds, but the nanos cancel out in any of the calculations. But you just have to be prepared for these sorts of weird questions, and they'll talk about super fast sports cars that travel at 0.6 of the speed of light. Now I know that's not happening, but you have to think, this is sort of a model for radioactive particles and subatomic particles that can travel at those speeds, and they travel through, say, the Large Hadron Collider. Now that's 23 kilometers around. So we're talking about a big distance and traveling at maybe 0.9 times the speed of light. If you knew the time as measured for one orb, one circular um, track of the uh, Large Hadron Collider, you could have it measured in terms of the clock uh, aboard the uh, subatomic particle and the time as measured by uh, observers in the um, in the Large Hadron Collider, the scientists. So you get two different times. Now, I've tried to establish that this must be T0 and this is T. Now one trick you can always use if you're given two times is to think, and I established this um, earlier, that T is always greater than T0. So if you've got two times here, of course this has to be uh, T0. Now when I've said your clock, we're talking about your clocks, because these have to be synchronized. Okay, so if this is your house or your yard and the truck's going past from there to there, the truck only needs one clock. This is one clock because there's a clock that's aboard the truck and it'll record the two different times. That's the single clock. But you need a clock here. This is clock one at the start and clock two at the finish. So you need two clocks. So you're measuring T. The observer aboard the truck is only, only needs one clock inside the truck to measure the start and the stop of the journey, which is the start of your house and the end of your house. Okay, let's just quickly do a calculation to see how this works out. So basically, now I said earlier that um, calculating V is one of the trickier questions, but let's see how we'd go. Now you have the formula, which is T equals T0 over 1 minus V squared on C squared. Now, if you want to work in units of C, you can forget about this C squared. It makes life a little bit simpler. What you can do, and I tell my students to do this, you can do that because V is in units of C. Okay, so you keep that in mind. So when you get an answer at the end, you have to remember it's in units of C. So let's try this. Um, we'll do it over here so I've got some room. T equals T, oh sorry, T, which is 10, equals 5 over 1 minus V squared. Now that's not hard for you to calculate. You rearrange that to get this. Okay, that's which equals 0.5. And then you square both sides and you get 1 minus v squared equals 0 0.25. I've squared that to get that, squared that to get that, and I end up with 
Um, 1 minus 0 0.25 equals v squared. I've taken the negative v squared over the other side. I've brought that over as a negative and I get that. And that leads me to, we haven't got much room here, but I'll go up here. I've got 0 0.75 equals v squared. So v is the square root of that. And if you do that on a calculator, it comes to 0 0.8. 866. Now that's in units of C. You have to write the C in from before. Okay, so that truck <coughs> must have been going at 0.866 C and it went past your place and it took the truck driver five seconds according to their clock aboard the truck. But you, with your two synchronized clocks, measured 10 seconds. Okay, and that's how you do that sort of question. Now I might leave it at that. That's basically establishing which clock is moving. And I told you before that T0 is called proper time and or proper time interval. I better get this right. Um, I keep forgetting to put in interval. I just it's a bit lazy, but it should be proper time interval. So that's T0. And this is called dilated time or dilated time interval. Okay, and, and that's how you do it. So that's T is the dilated time interval. So I've covered this proper versus dilated time interval and I've told you about synchronized clocks and we'll leave it there. Thank you.